Yeah. Here I am on Bertech here on my way home from work. Um, quite early actually. Oh, about 20, what time does Bertie's watch say? 25 past six. Um, uh, yeah, I just thought I'd switch the camera on. I don't usually um, normally have a, a mutter free ride. Well, actually, that's not true either, because I normally mutter to myself quite a bit. Yeah, normally about other drivers, I <laughs> know. <laughs> Marvellous, eh? Um, anyway, uh, I thought I'd expand more on Tame um, and the photographs. Uh, everyone seemed to uh, have the same problem, of course, that in those days taking photographs wasn't quite as easy as it is now. You know, you took them, you had to pay for the film, you took them, um, and then you had to get them developed and then put them in a, in a, in a, in a photo album or leave them in the, in the little cardboard folder that they came in. Yeah, and very often, if they weren't stored properly, they'd stick together. Do you remember that? Yeah, and then you'd ruin them anyway. Um, same if you put them in a photo album and then tried to extract them. Um, the clear film in the photo album would stick to them and ruin them. Yeah, over time, of course. Um, and now we have these phones and we're just constantly, you know, taking a photo, phew, just easy as that. But then I was looking on my phone, I've got nearly 20,000 photographs and about 4,000 videos. Yeah, uh, obviously most of it on the iCloud. Um, and photos that I'm very unlikely to... to see. So my phone's ringing in my pocket, it distracted me. Now I'm distracted by this VW GTD, yeah. Just pop round the front of him. Just to make a point, you see. Um, yeah, so photographs. The the funny things, aren't they? They don't have to provoke some memories. Yeah, look at that Bertie scooting through the traffic. Um, yeah, photographs, that's where I was. Uh, so, obviously, it's so much easier. Um, we take it for granted, but I have managed to salvage a few photographs of bikes I've had um, um, it immediately conjures up memories um, of the times I had on them I can almost remember the smell and uh, the sound from each one and trips I had on them incredible someone asked about the RJ250 Gamma um, and what was it like and it was marvellous and I, I'd, I'd gone um, from, oh, what was it, 
I'd gone from four strokes because they brought that out. I had I had the X7s, um, but when the Gamma came out, I just thought it was amazing to look at and sounded marvellous. I went like bilio. Uh, and a lot of my mates with the bigger bikes, they couldn't live with me on the back roads. Yeah, on the on the on the back roads. Um, up round North Yorkshire, up round Emsley, and all round there. Oh, I was like a demon. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I remember stopping at, at one point. We'd been to Scarborough. Yeah. Oh, Scarborough, marvellous place, lovely beach. Um, and um, we stopped for a fag, I know, <laughs> terrible d things, um, but we did. And uh, as well as me smoking, the tyres were, yeah, they were steaming, they were so hot. And that we, you know, because tyres in those days were rubbish. Even roadrunners were what you went for if you if you had the money. Um, uh, but everything else was square. There were terrible tyres, um, and I can't remember what tyres. It was the stock tyres I had on, but they were good, um, and they they took in heat and they held it. Yeah, that's what I remember from the RJ250. I remember being out one day with my, uh, my mum and dad, yeah, my dad on a Bonneville and uh, my mate and I can't remember what he was on but anyway we were going sensible because we were with my dad and my dad had my mum on the back and he wasn't going like a loon, he was on, on this Bonneville, we were driving nice and uh, someone came whistling past us, I can't even remember what bike it was but my dad said when we got back he said I knew you were gonna go and of course me and my mate ha, um, we set off after it, yeah we did, of course we caught it and left it for dust and then pulled over and waited for my dad yeah we couldn't help ourselves um, so that's what I remember about the RG250 um, uh, and I've, I do have a, a photograph of it um, yeah with a bird on yeah and it was a Polaroid yeah which is brilliant um, and it's, uh, it hasn't stood up to time that badly, really. Uh, so, that was that. Um, and uh, what else did I find a photograph of? I found lots of general photographs of the bikes in general that we had uh, LC but you'll see we had a old gang and you'll see in one of them a photograph of my sister Suzuki Love do you remember that? A Suzuki Love yeah? marvellous um, and in the background of another photograph You'll see my dad had a XS850. Bloody great thing it was, but fearing that he could fit a car behind. I know, what a beast that was. And I think my brother actually got that off my dad in the end. I can't remember. Um, but I also had a GS750. Now there's a tail to that GS750. Um, and there was a guy, I was coming back from Leeds and I had my sister's, I had my sister's boyfriend on the back. Um, and um, 
this guy kept trying to cut us up every time we went to go past him he'd swerve out of one lane into the other lane yeah and he did it a few times and I guess really perhaps I ought to have just dropped back and left him to it but I didn't I, and I had one more go at it and as I did he swerved across and he clipped the central reservation kerb and there wasn't a barrier across it just a big wide open space and he, he lost control of this car and it just went head over tail all, all the way across this grass verge into the oncoming traffic on the other way yeah but we we stopped um, and uh, oh, well everybody stopped yeah um, but oh, he'd been drinking apparently he was something like four times over the legal limit um, and unfortunately he killed himself and his wife yeah um, so that wasn't very pleasant as youngsters for us we had to do the um, Uh, no, I was going to say the post-mortem, not the post-mortem. The investigation thing. I can't remember what they call it. Hot <laughs> madness. Yeah. Uh, you know, where you stand up in court. The coroner's inquest. That's it. Yeah. We had to stand up in court and say what had happened. And it was funny um, sitting there waiting to go in. Um, and there was a whole string of people that had had similar incidents with him all the way all the way from Leeds to about halfway between Leeds and York he'd been doing some crazy stuff um, but there you go, very sad nonetheless uh, and that stayed with me I often think of that and that's why I oh, I tend not to get involved with people if I can. No, I would not at those sort of speeds. Um, so, yeah, so that's a tale from that GS750. Yeah. Um, well, one of my favourite bikes, a surprising bike, and everyone thought I was bonkers when I bought it, was a Kawasaki Z400J. Yeah, it was bog standard when I bought it and I gradually changed it bit by bit and that made a marvellous sound and went like stink um, round the corner. You, can you tell a, that there's a thing, a theme there, isn't there? Every bike I had went like stink and um, if you spoke to York Suzuki Centre uh, where they nicknamed me Animal, <laughs> yeah, I know, marvellous. Um, uh, they'd say it wasn't the bikes that went like stink it was me <laughs> i know um but there you go uh i maybe did um my brother will tell you a story as well about me wheeling the full length of um Jilly gate in york <laughs> yeah and in fact continuing it down past the hospital <laughs> i know he could believe it uh, without putting the front wheel down um, that, were, that was on the gamma actually yeah that was on the gamma um, but uh, mopeds as well AP50s I had an X1 for about 30 seconds uh, when I realised I couldn't actually make it go any faster um, that went again and I got another AP50 yeah, I did have a Fantic GT as well um, and all the Bantams and uh, Tiger Cubs they were before we were on the road yeah we had those as field bikes can you imagine oh I'd die for one now um, so they were good fun and uh, we had a few Honda Cubs yeah strip them down and have those as field bikes oh, they're worth a bob or two now as well don't have any photos of those we just didn't do it we were kids we didn't have cameras cameras for adults and holidays 
uh, GS850, have I got a photo of that? Might have a photo of that. Um, oh, I can't remember. But uh, the later bikes, um, I didn't get an iPhone, believe it or not, till about 2016. Um, so even then, photos had to be from a, a, a small digital camera. Um, but I did have some photos of um, my GTR. I had a GTR 1000. Um, I don't have any photos of my TL 1000. Um, but I do have a photo of my trophy and of my Daytona. Yeah, so maybe I'll be able to get those up. Anyway, I'm off. Daffodils are almost there. Ta-ta.